Next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the Palisade. So I gotta say this thing looks sharp, beautiful screen there, nice and responsive. It is really, really nice. Now, a few things to point out right along the side, first and foremost, we've got our seat belt so we can see who's currently plugged in. Because we've got the bench, or because we've got the dual captain's chairs, we do only have two seats in the middle row. But if we had that full bench, we would have another one show up there. So it is kind of cool. We can see who's actually plugged in. But like I said, this is going to be our main screen. We can just do a button press to see what screens we can flip in between there as well, or just kind of start flipping as we go. So a ton of different things that are available with our basic home screen here. We can push this in order to get to different user profiles. So really useful because we can ID the driver, we can change our image, we can link our blue link profile and a ton of other things. So it is nice that we've got so much flexibility there. So if we've got multiple people driving the vehicle, we can adjust and lock things in like all of our different presets and things like that based off of who's currently driving. Moving up along the top brings us back to our home screen. This is going to give us a few options. So we've got our display off. So if you just want a blank naked screen, button press to bring it back on, we can edit all of our home icons. So if you wanted to adjust which icon is where, all we're gonna do is press and hold, and then we can kind of drag as necessary to customize the full screen. And that's between all of these things. So if you're gonna use things a little bit more frequently, we can adjust which position is in what, and what section we can just do a reset back to our factory defaults instead so if you've played around with it too much just brings us back to our factory default button press along the top also can bring up our user manual qr code so all we have to do here is just pull out our phone we're just going to scan and we can open up in order to get into our owner's manual it is really nice that we've got that as an option there Jumping back home brings us back to the main screen. We've got our current time, we've got our date, and then whether or not we're connected to Wi-Fi networks and things like that. Well, let's go through everything. So firstly, we've got our little map icon there, and that's gonna bring up our factory navigation, but I mean, look at this. So nice. We can push this in order to go to back to our main center. We've got our north view, we've got our top view, we've got another, like there are so many different views, it is really cool. Really nice. We can jump back home if we want to. Guidance We've got some options for guidance volume. volume. So if we wanted to adjust the voice, sound effects, things like that, we guidance can do that. We can also have navigation priority. So if we've got our audio playing and then we're coming to an upcoming turn, it's gonna lower that volume so we can hear what's going on. We can increase or decrease to zoom in and out. We can also do pinch to zoom that way if we want to. We can have it set automatically. So it's automatically gonna kind of zoom in and out for us as we go. We've got a base menu button. We can search for an address there as well. We can also go a little bit of a split screen here so we can kind of go up and down in order to get to different things there. So we just kind of scroll up and down as we go in order to be able to get to different sub screens, which is kind of cool. Back out, we can also adjust and we can add in destinations this way if we want to. We can add in a waypoint, save it. We can look at point of interest icons. So let's go through and I'm going to circle back into me we're going to go back to our menu and we've got a few other options so we've got nearby information so anything nearby for point of interest icons do we want to show gas stations restaurants cafes pharmacies things like that do we want to display our traffic info do we want to turn the display off again so a few different ways we can do that it's kind of cool Moving up next, we've also got this, so we could search for addresses this way if we want to. We can just start typing in address, and then if we want to, so I've already searched for this address here, nice Canadian of me, a Tim Hortons, so we're gonna click on that. We can also activate our Blue Link services, which I, this vehicle is an unsold unit, so I'm not gonna do that. And clicking through, let's hide this and go full screen. We've got two different routes that are available now. So we can select which route we wanna go. We can start guidance, we can add in a waypoint. So let's say if we wanted to add in something in between, so going to a gas station, we can do that. We hit done, we can avoid certain things. So if we wanna avoid freeways, toll roads, and other things, we've got that flexibility. We just recalculate whenever we add in certain things. So we just recalculate, I'm gonna deactivate this for now, and no. And there we go, so it's readjusted. So if it recognized that, you know, the route that we were taking and needed to adjust for toll roads and things like that, it would automatically do that. And then we just hit the start guidance. guidance. Will start now. And here Turn we go. So we've got two individual views there. We've got our main view and then our kind of zoomed in view there as well. We can have one view or the other show up if we'd like to. 
We can show different rest areas. We can look at details up along the top. We can also see what's going on with parking nearby. We can see how far off we are. We can reroute as necessary. We can see how long it's going to take versus the estimated time of arrival. Closing off from there, we can also easily cancel the route if we want to go that route. So it is really straightforward using this. We can push all along the side there in order to, again, be able to adjust, add in different navigation guidance and things like that. So whether we decide to kind of zoom out this way to say, hey, we want to go there and then set destination, we've got that available as an option. Just button press there to go back to center again. So really straightforward. Now, one cool thing is that if we are on the home screen there, we could go to map and navigation there, or we just press the map button there in order to get into our map. And same idea, we've got navigation settings, which we can get to from the home screen, or we just press nav to hot button press and get into these instead. So some options, we can search, we can look at all our point of interest icons. So if we want to see what's going on with gas stations nearby, coffee shops and things like that, we'd have that flexibility. We can see previous destinations that we've gone to. If we want to, we can also delete destinations. So we can delete previously gone to destinations very simply there, two seconds and it's done. Moving back, we can go look at frequently visited uh, addresses and then different searches that we've performed. We can look at saved places. So really useful if you go to multiple places all the time, you can set up your home, work and favorite addresses. And one of the cool things there is that if we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, we can also say navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be, and it'll automatically launch the map up to go to this place, which is really cool. We can see what's going on with Hyundai dealerships. We've got traffic, and then we've also got our favorites right along the very bottom. So we've got our saved places, and then we've got all of the different options there. We can press in in order to search. We can have it go for point of interest icons, previous destinations, and things like that to set up all of our personal spots, the places that we want to go. It's really cool. And then as you saw there, pressing settings along the top brings us into a series of different navigation settings. So in our display, do we want to show our vehicle speed? for the display for the map? Yes, no. Do we want to show our traffic info, traffic colors, point of interest icons? So all of them, certain ones. Do we want to show our fuel price information as well? Looking at some options for guidance. Guidance, do we want to show speed limits or detailed guidance views? Looking at our navigation voice guidance, do we want to be able to mute things out as we're near our destination? Do we want to enable as we get closer to a border crossing? Do we want to show our full route overview when the vehicle comes to a complete stop? Previous destinations, do we want to save them? Or if we have this deselected, whenever we go to an address, it's going to delete it automatically. And then do we want to show our previous destinations as well? Options for map, we can change it out. So whether it's going to be the north up 2D, 2D heading, 3D, etc. We can auto scale, which means it's automatically going to zoom in and out as necessary, just depending on how close we are to our destination. We can change out our font size. So if you need things a little bit larger, if you want to change out the color of the map, oh, that's really cool. Blacked out map, really nice. So you've got some options. Actually, I want to see what that looks like. Blacked out map, map. Oh, that's cool. All right, that's kind of neat. So we've got that available as an option. Jumping back into settings, map color so we can change it out to whatever we'd like to there moving back we can also change out our star tracky kind of symbol who do we want to be we've also got our map auto scale so as we're going different speeds how far or close is it going to zoom in and out for our destination there which is kind of cool some other base settings do we want it to automatically recenter the map do we want to have the return to map so as we're going through different navigation settings and things like that do we want it to automatically return to the map or not do we want to show, well, we've got all of our user data there, so we can import or export as necessary. And we can see our current GPS location. So if, we've, if we're lost, we're not sure where to go, and you know we need to call CAA, AAA, whatever the case may be, we can share our GPS location as necessary if we need to. But tons of different settings, but that's everything you need to know about factory navigation inside of this thing. Next up, adding in a phone is straightforward. So we're gonna start off on the iPhone side of things. As you can see there, we've got a phone that's already connected. We can add in, we can go to settings, or we can cancel. So let's actually jump into settings for a second to show you a few things. So we've got our device connections, so we can add in a new device, we can delete. We've got our Bluetooth prompts as well. We've got our system information, so we can change the vehicle name this way. So if you wanna call it Bob's Ride, we've got the flexibility to do it. And we can also change our pass key as we're connecting. 
phone projection settings. So we've got enable for full screen Android Auto Apple CarPlay. We can use split screen as well if we want to. I'm curious because on previous Android Autos, uh, split screen didn't work. Or sorry, full screen didn't work. It was always split screen. So I'm going to leave that disabled for both of them for now. I'll jump back in and show you what it looks like though. But that's all of our de device connection settings. So we go back into our phone again and let's look at adding Turn in a phone. Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. So we're going to Bluetooth and we're just looking for Palisade. Pins match up, which is good. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no to that one for now, but I am now fully connected there. So if we jump back into my phone now, so you can see there, it's going to try to navigate or download contact history and things like that. It's not going to because I said no, but we've got everything we need. So messages, contacts, things like that. We've got our phone name. We've also got what's currently going on with our connection and our battery life. We've got our speaker there as well. So if we wanted to dial out that way, we could. We can swap out devices. If we press and hold, we've also got our Siri Assistant that's pulling up there. We can also press and hold on the steering wheel in order to be able to activate Siri that way. So it is really cool that we've got so many options that are available here. Next up, we've also got the flexibility of setting up Android Auto Apple CarPlay. We are looking at a wired connection in order to be able to do it, but I mean, at the same time, it's not overly difficult. So we're just gonna take our USB cable. We're gonna plug it into our USB port opposite end of the cable. We're just plugging ourselves in. And there we go. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the Palisade is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. We're going to hit next and OK in order to agree to this. Launch into CarPlay and I mean, two seconds and we're fully connected. So this is our main home screen. We can swipe across in order to go to different sub screens if we want to. We can press this button whenever it's changed out in order to get back to this main screen. But we've got Go, we've got Voice, we've currently got what's going on with our audio. So our media on the phone is going to show up there. We've got Phone, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, we've got Waze, and we can use all of these things right through the middle screen as well, which is fantastic and full screen. We can also, so in all of these map applications, change out our root options. We've got our map colors, head north up. We can adjust the volume and things like that. Easily search for an address. We can easily move this way, but we can't pinch to zoom. We actually just have to go in here and we can either increase or decrease this way if we want to. I'm just hitting done when we're finished up and then searching for an address there or a button press to get back this way. Certain apps will work through this screen. Other ones may not, just depending on, well, I mean, it's Apple CarPlay essentially. So certain things like Hoopla is a library app. Live One is a radio app and certain things will work and won't work. So YouTube music, you can play over Bluetooth. YouTube video will not play over CarPlay. So we can't watch video, unfortunately, right through the screen. I'm like, oh, I wish, just not available there as an option. But I mean, it is really nice that we've got this. So CarPlay, really straightforward to use. If we jump back into our setup for a second, we've got our device connections. And let's go device connection. Oh, actually I wanna go phone projection. So in order to be able to change anything, we need to unplug first, phone projection. And the reason why I'm doing this is to show you what split screen is like. So we're gonna go split screen. We're gonna plug back in. And it's reading, it'll take a second there. Download. Okay, Apple CarPlay is connected. So let's go back home, launch into CarPlay. And as you can see there, we've now got our split screen set up. Now, another thing to point out is that as of right now, it doesn't look like it will it let us. Okay, so we can go up and down between these different screens in our sub screen. We can't change out our sources though. So if we wanna, let's say, listen to the radio, whatever the case may be, what we have to do is hit radio here. It's gonna pull up this radio screen instead. So all we're gonna do is change to, do we want AM, FM, Sirius XM? So we're gonna to tune to whatever station we want to, whether that's AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. So we can see the radio is going and all we do is go home, back to CarPlay. And then as you can see there, we are listening to our radio again. So it's, uh, and unfortunately like we have to kind of do that route where we get out of CarPlay, go into our audio that we wanna to listen to, relaunch CarPlay in order for it to work, but that's how we set it up. So super simple to do, and that's the same on the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto side of things. A little bit of a pain, but I mean, as you saw there, not impossible to do all at the same time. 
And then if we go back home, we can go back to our setup there. We can go to our device connections. If we look at our currently connected devices, you can see I'm connected to CarPlay. If we have multiple phones connected, we can kind of go up and down to see who gets connection priority. So if you've got multiple devices connected or in the vehicle, who is gonna to connect to first? We can also, if we want to, unplug. And as you can see there, it now gives us the flexibility of connecting either our phones or strictly the audio. So if you wanted to have one phone set up for our phone and the other one set up for audio, we'd have that flexibility. We can also easily delete devices, select, delete, yes, and three, two, one, the phone is now disconnected. So it's that simple setting up Apple CarPlay inside of the Palisade. All right, next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So what we're gonna do is go to phone, we can hit add. And then on the phone, we just make sure that we scan in our Bluetooth. We've got Palisade, make sure it adds up, okay. Perfect. And it's connected now. So we jump into our phone again. And as you can see there, we've got call history, dial pad. We've got the phone name. We've got our current battery levels, connection levels, and things like that. So tons of different options. We can easily do a phone swap this way. We can go full screen instead. So if you want to switch between devices, we can do that instead. But I mean, as you saw, they're very straightforward. We can start dialing in this way as well, but really straightforward. And then setting up Android Auto is the exact same process as Apple CarPlay. So we take our USB cable plug it into that USB port. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And Android Auto just pulls it up, so do we want to? And hit deny for contacts, next. Android Auto is connected. And it doesn't look like they fixed the full screen bug yet. Oh no! All right, so I do technically have full screen enabled, but it's obviously a split screen right now. So we still aren't in full screen Android Auto as of yet. I'm like, hopefully it comes soon, we're just not there. But as you can see there, we're connected. We've got Google Maps showing up. Same thing as we saw on the iPhone side of things. We can jump through, changing out our route options and things like that. Easily search for addresses. We've got podcasts. We've got our music recommendations, our notifications. We've got our Google Assistant there. So we can push there to get our Google Assistant. Or we do is do a press and hold on our steering wheel. So long press and hold in order to get to this screen instead. Moving in here brings us back to our main screen there. So as you can see, I technically, so I do have both Google Maps and Waze installed on this phone, but it's only Google Maps that's showing up as of right now. So it doesn't look like we're on the Waze side of things in this car as of yet, unfortunately. But we've at least got our factory navigation or we can jump into Google Maps that way. We can jump into our podcast this way if we want to. Back home, pressing that little button and things like that. So it is nice that we've got so many options. We could technically customize the layout. It's not quite as user-friendly as it is on the Apple side of things. And the reason why I say that is because when we search for Android Auto on our phone, it's going to give us the flexibility to do a few things, just not quite as many things as the Apple side of things. So if we search for Android Auto, we've got our settings there. We've got our currently connected car, previously connected cars. We've got a few other things. Now, it does show wireless Android Auto on here. Unfortunately, this screen does not support wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And then very similar to what we saw on the Apple side of things, we can also customize it. So if we want different things to show up in different locations, we've got that flexibility. One thing to note, any changes that we make here, we actually have to disconnect our phone and we have to reconnect in order for any changes to take effect. So it's not dynamic the same way it is on the Apple side of things, but I mean, it still is nice at the end of the day, we've got that flexibility. Jumping back home, we can go back into our device connections if we want to. And we can also look at our device connections, see what's connected. Now, one interesting thing, in order to be able to delete it, we actually have to disconnect first. So if you ever get that message, just make sure you're unplugged, not set up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Select your device, delete, yes, three, two, one, and the phone is deleted. So it's that simple setting up both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of the Palisade. All right, next up, so as you can see there, we've got our phone and phone projection. We've also got voice memos. So if we wanted to record memos right onto the car, we could do that. We've got some pretty cool climate control settings here too. So we do have dual zone climate control that we can adjust this way if we want to. We've got a generic sync button. So what that's going to do is bring our passenger side to whatever the driver's side is. We can have the vehicle determine what's going on with the cabin temperature there as well. 
We can have it going to our windshield face feet, some sort of Frankenstein combination of all of the above, which is kind of cool. And again, as I said, we can sync up from there if we want to turn the whole system off. We do also have some options for rear climate. So we could lock out the rear climate controls. So if kids are, you know, bugging you back there, we can lock them out. We've got some options for recirculating air, dehumidify, defog. We can pull up our rear climate as well. So if we wanted to adjust what's going on with our rear climate settings, we've got that flexibility. We can have it automatically adjust, turn the whole system off, or have it go to the face, feet, etc., or combination of the above. Jump back into front, front climate if we want to. Rear climate there is an option, which is kind of nice. Turn it off. We've got our rear warmer. So if your Palisade has the option for our heated second row seats, we would have the flexibility here in order to be able to adjust it as necessary. So we can turn off the left seat, we can turn on the right, left seat, whatever the case may be, right from the front here, which is really, really nice. So the settings that you've got will all show up here, whether it's heated, ventilated, whatever the case may be. And then just button press in order to get back home again. And next up, we've got our valet mode. So we do need to have Blue Link activated, but that's essentially going to lock things out so valets can't look through all of our different settings and things like that. Passenger talk, so you can hear that. So what's going to happen there is that essentially picks up the microphone in the front end and it lets us talk to what's going on, what, to everybody that's in the second and third row of the vehicle. So if you've got kids screaming, rather than turning around and screaming at them, you can say, hey, calm down and you can do that right through the screen here instead. We can enter in a quiet mode, which is useful because if you've got sleeping kids, what we can do is we can hit quiet mode and it's going to lower all of the lower all of the volume to max 25 and strictly use the front speakers inside of the vehicle. From there, we've got our rear climate, which we saw earlier. We've got our HD radio, series of different options for setup there as well. So starting off, we've got some options for vehicle settings, which I mean, tons of options here. We've got things for driving convenience. So if we've got, we want to adjust our smart cruise control systems, we can do that. We've got our highway drive assist, which these things are really great because it's more or less going to keep us fully balanced in our lane as we go with all of these different things. Like smart cruise control is going to raise or lower our speed as necessary, which is fantastic. We've got our speed limit assist. So if we've got it turned on, what that's going to do is if it recognizes that we're going a little bit too fast based off of this, it's going to either assist us, so slow the vehicle down, it's going to give us a warning, or it's going to do nothing. We've got different warning volumes as well. So whether or not these things show up for parking safety, driving safety, etc., high, normal, low, or nothing. Haptic warning. So do we want a little bit of a steering wheel shake when we start to veer over into a lane without signaling? Lane departure alert, so if we start to veer over too many times, eventually it's going to tell us we should probably take a break. Some options for driver safety, forward safety, if there's a potential collision, it's going to automatically brake for us. And we've got some different things, so whether that's standard or if it's going to take a little bit longer to do. Lane safety is going to help keep us nudged into our lane. Blind spot, our side view mirror, there's a little icon that's going to highlight and let us know if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Blind spot monitor. As we hit left versus right arrow, or turning stick, our monitor means that we're going to get a little indicator right in our cluster screen, letting us know what's going on on either side of the vehicle. Exit safety is potentially going to let us know if somebody's in our blind spot there and provide a warning sound for us. And then parking safety. So camera settings, we've got a few different options there. Do we want to show our parking lines, distance lines? different things for display on top of that. So do we want it bright, darker, adjust the contrast and things like that? But I mean, the camera inside of this thing is really cool. Like we've got our basic backup camera, we've got our full 360 camera, but watch this, bam! Look at how freaking cool this is. So as we go backwards, whatever the case may be, so we can adjust here, so we can see what's going on around us as we go it is such a crazy system like i absolutely love the way that this thing looks i love the functionality of it it is really really cool so we've got some really good options for our parking safety 360 cameras etc different options for drive modes so for towing are we towing heavy medium or lightweight as well some different options for our cluster screen so do we want to change out the brightness of the cluster blue light filter audio system and things like that it is really nice so blue light filter is useful because if we're driving later on at night it can help to reduce eye strain 
Do we want to have it automatically come on as it's later on at night, or do we want to schedule when the blue light filter turns on? Audio system on off. Do we want to continue to play the music while the vehicle is turned off? And then different options for our camera settings. So we saw that one earlier. Next up, different options. Ooh, did I get all of these? I did not. Okay. We've got our service interval there as well. So do we want to enable service intervals? So yes, no. Let's us know exactly what's going on when we need to get service done. Refuel. So do we want to reset our fuel economy after we refuel when we start the vehicle or manually? What's showing up in the cluster? Do we want to have our wiper lights, our blind spot monitor, icy road? Do we want to have the welcome sound as well? Moving into our climate. We saw some of these earlier when we were in climate, but for recirculate air, do we want to have that activated when we use our wiper? Do we want to have it automatically dehumidify or schedule the ventilation? Auto defog, and then our base climate settings so we can lock these things out. Different options for our seat as well. So do we want to have an alert whenever our seat position's changed? Our third row back folding, so it's kind of cool. Do we want to have the left or right seat folded or unfolded as well? And we can control that. That is crazy. I didn't even know we could do that from the inside here. We can either have it fold, unfold as necessary right inside of the cluster or the media screen. That is really cool. I love that. We've got our seating access as well. So what that means is that when we go to turn the vehicle off, it's going to lower and then back our seat up so that we can get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. Some different options for lights. So with our turn signal, do we want to have three blinks? Do we want to have one, five, or seven? Our welcome lighting as we approach, do we want our lamps on the outside to, a, to light down in order for us to see what's going on? Our headlight delay, so after we go to lock the vehicle, do we want those headlights to stay on? High beam assist, what that's going to do is it's automatically going to reduce our high beam if it recognizes an oncoming vehicle. Different options for our door. For locking, do we want to have the doors automatically lock when we shift or when we hit a, when, or when we start driving? Do we want them to unlock when we shift to park? when we turn the vehicle off, or do we never want them to automatically unlock? Do we want to have the vehicle too pressed to unlock? Do we want to turn off our power lift gate? Do we want it opening fast or slow? Do we want to also have our full open, level one, two, or three, or do we want to be able to select our own unique height? We've also got our smart lift gate. So smart lift gate, when we've got our key fob on us, it's automatically going to open up the lift gate for us. Let's hop outside, I'll show you how that system works. In order to use the smart lift gate inside of the Palisade, what we want to do, make sure that the vehicle's locked first. Now, from there, you actually have to walk away for about 10 to 15 seconds at least. So we go shopping, groceries, pick up your kids, whatever the case may be, and then go for a walk. And then once you've waited about that 15 seconds or so, you're just gonna start walking towards the back end of the vehicle. <laughs> completely hands-free which is phenomenal like i love the fact that we've got that available as an option and then we can also use our key fob in order to be able to roll the window down as well it's fantastic so in order to be able to use the setting what we're going to do on the key fob we're going to press the unlock button twice on the second button press we're going to hold and then one thing to note, we do have to keep on holding it because if we let it go, it's going to stop part way. But watch this, we're gonna go one, two and hold. Down they go, we release and it stops. If we press again, back down they go, we can go all the way down. So it is going to be a power down and it is a manual backup. Moving back, we've also got, so all of these options, our convenience settings, so do we want our rear occupant alert inside of our cluster screen when we turn the vehicle off? Do we want the rear wiper coming on? So if we've got our front windshield wiper going and then we put the vehicle into reverse, it's automatically gonna turn our rear wiper on for us. And that's, well, basic, that's everything about our vehicle settings. We've also got our navigation settings, which we've already seen these ones. Different options for sound. So do we want to have our speed dependent volume? So it's gonna adjust our volume based off of how fast we're going. Do we wanna have it focused everywhere, just on us? Do we wanna change out the treble mid-range bass? Uh, that is a little much. Something like that would kind of be like an ideal setting. So a little bit less on the treble, mid-range at zero, bass at four is gonna sound really good. 
guidance options? So do we want to have all of these different volumes going? Radio noise, do we want to minimize? Driver assistance settings, so do we want to have all of our park safety priorities, which we've seen these ones. We've got connected devices audio, so do we want to have our media and voice guidance at what volume? So we can select our volume there for both Android Auto and for Apple CarPlay. We can also toggle off that beeping, so if that drives you nuts, we can turn it off. Moving back, we've also got our device connections, which we saw that earlier. We've got user profiles that we've already seen. We've got our voice recognition as well, so we can also reduce the number of voice recognition prompts. Screen layout, do we want to have it linked to or the different drive mode that we're in? Different screen savers, so do we want to have nothing when we turn the display off? Do we want to have an analog or a digital clock? So it's kind of nice that we've got that as an option, and we can also adjust what the clock face looks like, which is kind of cool. Split screen, when we're in split screen, what's showing up? I personally just recommend showing everything, but then you can also just do a drag and hold if you want to adjust what's showing up where. Moving back, we've got our display, so we can adjust the brightness, adjust our blue light, audio system on off, and then our camera settings which again, we've seen all of these when we were in other screens. And that's kind of a recurring theme. In your main settings, you can see the majority of things. And then as you dive in deeper, you're gonna see some of these things repeated as well. We've got three customizable buttons. So we've got two on the steering wheel, and then we've got one just right down there. So we can customize which each one of these buttons will do. When we hit the volume knob, what that's, what's that going to do as well? So we've got a few different options that are available there. We've got our blue link system. And then we've got a series of the general settings. So we've got our system update. So if there's an update available, we can go there. We've got some basic system information there to see what's going on with our storage, QR code in order to get into our user manual, modem info. We can adjust our date and time based off of our GPS location, or we can manually adjust. Do we want to have our 12 or 24 hour mode? Do we want to have it automatically adjust? So for our daylight savings time there as well. So actually, I guess it's technically a manual adjust, but it is available there. For languages, do we want English, French, Spanish, or Korean? And then for our keyboard, do we want to have our QWERTY keyboard? Do we want to have our ABCD, et cetera? And then do we want to have for what keyboard language do we want there? So many different options that are available. Next up, jumping into our radio. So as you can see there, we've got what's currently going on with our radio. We can tune this way if we want to, so just right down there. We can also scan this way, and then in order to save a station, we just tune to the one that we want. We press the little star button in order to be able to save the station in, and as you can see there, we can jump between all of our preset pages, and that's a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. We've got our HD radio, and then our Quantum Logic sound as well. We can jump between AM, FM, Sirius XM also gives us a few other things, so we can press here in order to be able to enter the channel name that way instead, if we wanted to. And then, we've also got a series of other things. So for Sirius XM specifically, we can look at our channel list, see all the channels that are available. We can jump back and go inside of this menu to scan all of our channels. We can delete presets and things like that as well. So it is kind of nice that we've got the flexibility to actually delete presets that we don't really want. So if all of the presets are there, we can just mark all, delete, start from scratch if we really wanted to. But it's cool. And then going back, we've got some basic stations this way. So we can also adjust, enter a station in this way instead. OK to change that way. We can go back up and see our full station list. So if we're in a new area, we want to know what's playing and what's available. We just go to our station list, give it a few seconds. We can save these things as presets based off of what's currently around us right now. Moving back, but it is cool. I love the way that looks. And we can also do a split screen on this thing if we want to. Moving back, let's go into our media next. And that gives us the flexibility of adjusting what media we're connected to. So we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. Sounds of nature is kind of neat. So listen to this. Tons of different options there. We can push this in order to get back to our media sources again, and giving us tons of different options. We can go Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an available option as well. But so many options available. Moving back, we've got our blue link, notification, and then back to our user manual there as well. So a ton of different options that are available here. 
pressing back home. And I did mention we've got a series of other buttons just right underneath here as well. So we can button press to get to our map, navigation settings, our radio. If we wanted to adjust our media, we've got our four-way blinkers. We can change between songs or stations this way. We can do a longer press and hold there as well if we want to. We've got a customizable button or we can enter our generic setup there as well. So it's pretty straightforward using the media screen. I know there are so, so many things that were covered off. So if you ran into any problems, if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up and share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care.